Register Phenomena Code 147 Object Class Beta Yellow Hazard Types Auditory Hazard Sapient Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-147 itself is self-contained, with the exception of its RPC-147-1 instances. Due to their nature and sporadic manifestations, RPC-147-1 instances are currently unable to be contained. OL Site-147 has been established near the area circled around by RPC-147, and must be kept under observation by designated on-site personnel through the use of various remote-controlled drones equipped with standard recording devices. All husk events are to be appropriately recorded and archived, as well as any minor changes in RPC-147's travel speeds. OL Site-147 is to be disguised as an active ecological research station and wildlife preserve. A 50km radius of protected waters is to be maintained around the site. These waters are to be routinely patrolled by Authority assets disguised as research personnel. Trespassers are to be interrogated, administered amnestics, and released into the nearby town of… Description: RPC-147 is a steam train, specifically a Union Pacific Railroad's 4000 Class 4884 articulated steam locomotive commonly known as a big boy. The surface of RPC-147 is laden with what appears to be an isolated coral reef ecosystem, including an array of diverse marine life such as various crustaceans, most notably barnacles, mollusks, gastropods, and echinoderms. However, it is currently unknown how this ecosystem is supported due to the little sunlight that reaches it. Additionally. RPC-147's chimney also seems to act as a pseudo-hydrothermal vent that supports its own ecosystem alongside the reef, incorporating chemosynthetic bacteria as well as Riftia pacatilla, giant tube worms. It is currently located off of the coast of Alaska, on the ocean floor of the Southern Sea, at a depth of approximately 1,205 meters. RPC-147's engine measures approximately 26 meters in length. RPC-147 is surmised to be operating on the ocean floor of the Arctic, without rails. It is not currently known what fuels RPC-147. However, it is hypothesized to be a result of an anomalous biofuel originating from the localized ecosystems upon it. Due to the inherent property of RPC-147, this specific attribute is difficult to thoroughly study. The speed at which RPC-147 travels underwater is approximately 330 km per hour, which is notably much faster than that of the average steam engine. The average speed being approximately 168.5 km per hour. Alongside the effects of prolonged exposure to the pressure of the ocean's depths, RPC-147 possesses extraordinary endurance. RPC-147 travels along a set path that roughly circles around the area on the ocean floor known as the Tarak Igloo by the local Inupiat peoples, later classified as SAA-08. This roughly translates to Shadow Home in a nictitude. Based off of folklore often told by local Inupiat tribes, this is supposedly the origin point of a race of anomalous entities. This area measured approximately 210 meters in length and 195 meters in width. RPC-147 appears to follow a strict procedure of performing six to eight revolutions before coming to a stop at the northernmost point of SAA-08, which is notably the point closest to land. When this occurs, a husk of it is undergone. Following this stop, RPC-147 will produce a sound, similar to that of those made by humpback whales. When this occurs, multiple, usually ten or eleven humanoids, cast in a black, unidentified substance bearing similar consistencies to ink, will exit RPC-147 
and dissipate soon afterwards. Multiple witnesses of entities possessing an appearance similar to these humanoids, hereby designated as instances of RPC-147-1, are reported in the nearby areas whenever a husk event occurs. The purposes of these presents are also unknown. Due to their nature, they are unable to be directly interacted with, and will dissipate shortly after any attempts to contact them are made. It is notable that disappearances among the Anupiat peoples are not infrequent, and that these disappearances increase during a small period after a husk event. Despite this, the people currently residing in the nearby town have had no qualms about this, or at least have exhibited no signs of such. Further investigation towards their involvement with RPC-147 and instances of RPC-147-1 are ongoing. Addendum 147-01 Following the introduction of RPC-147 into Authority Archives, Authority Agent Penbrook was immediately sent to investigate the local populace, as well as record further information on RPC-147-1 instances. Agent Pembroke took up residence within the town's motel before conducting their investigation, as well as recording any discoveries they had made on a private laptop. Pembroke was then instructed to provide ongoing updates on their inquiries. These updates suddenly stopped three days into Pembroke's investigation, who shortly disappeared without forewarning of any actions they may have taken prior to their disappearance, leaving behind several belongings within their motel room including their laptop, and a flash drive containing the aforementioned updates, as well as various audio recordings and type statements that are assumed to have supposedly been reserved for ongoing updates. Below is the recovered information. U-01 November 1, 2000 62856 This is Agent Pembroke. I've safely landed and have found residence in the town closest to the Anupiat settlement. I've already established my place. I should be ready to begin. I shall try to the best of my ability to maintain a clinical tone in my writings. All information found here shall be recorded in emergency drive should anything unexpected occur to me. I-01 Interviewer Agent Pembroke Interviewee Panna Black Anupiat native Fisherman. Forward. The local Anupiat tribes have shown to have extensive knowledge of RPC-147-1, but no currently proclaimed information regarding RPC-147 itself. Begin log. Okay, uh, Mr. Black was it? You can call me Panna. Alright, Panna. What do you know about RPC-147-1? Er, that is the shadow people that come here every so often. I suppose I am to assume you are speaking about the Teriaksuk? Is that what your people call them? They are called by a few names, yes. What would you like to know about them? Well, for starters, why not tell me about Terak Igloo? Hmm. Well, it is a portal for the Teriaksuk to come through. Not much else is known other than that, I'm afraid. I see. What about the Teriaksuk themselves? Why do they come here? They seek others that would join them. What do you mean by join them? I don't know. The only people who know are the ones who decide to actually go with the Teriaksuk back to wherever they usually come from. I don't understand. The Teriaksuk are a mysterious folk. Apparently they're just like us. We just can't see them. You can't look at them, or else they'll disappear, so you have to look at them using a mirror or the like. Don't ask me why. I ain't a Shadow Man expert. There isn't anything else? There has to be more. I'm sorry to say, but I've given you all I've got. The only ones with the extensive knowledge you seek are the elders of my village, and they aren't too keen on speaking to people like you. People like me? Outsiders, you know, preservation of tradition and all that. Okay, I have one last question for you. Have you ever encountered one yourself? I believe so, yes. At least I think I did. Did it say anything to you? It asked me if I wanted to join it on its train back home. 
I don't know why it wanted me to go with it on a train, but I politely declined. Disappeared as soon as it came. Well, alright, I think that's it. Thank you for your time, Mr. Black. Oh, no problem. I never quite understood tradition anyways. Also, one more thing. Yes? Avoid the shorelines. I heard the Teriaxic like to meet and greet with unique travelers such as yourself over there. I'll keep that in mind. End log. U-02 November 1, 2000 1306-29 Shortly after my interview with Panna Black and various short conversations with other non-native individuals, RPC-147-1 instances apparently do frequent the shorelines as previously found. However, people here don't so much as disappear, but will only go away. No ritual sacrifice or designations happen, as some very speculative researchers might like to think, but I'm still not quite sure what exactly goes on when something like that happens. Do they ever show up in greater numbers than one? Do they show themselves to more than one person at a time? More questions than answers at the moment. Shall maintain updates as I find more. November 2, 2000 123314 I found someone that could tell me more. Actually, one of the ever-elusive native elders. I had to do some rather mundane errands to do so. However, I can't exactly disclose what these were. I can assure you they aren't at all relevant to the investigation or RPC-147 in any way from what I can tell. The only way I was able to even find this particular individual was through active attempts to follow their tradition. I have to maintain that front to some extent. I-02 Interviewer Agent Pembroke Interviewee Tarkic A new Piat native Forward Finding further disclosure of important details relevant to RPC-147 has been difficult. However, Tarkic has become willing to share information with the stipulation that I be without escort or recording devices. This interview was however conducted with audio recording, despite their insistence. Began Log Thank you sincerely for allowing me to come here. I didn't think I'd ever get the chance. I assume you also know English? Of course I do. One must if they are to have good relations with their neighbors. Good, good. And you know why I'm here, yes? Word of curious outsiders spread fast, mister. I knew the moment you decided to talk with Panna. I apologize if what I did seemed intrusive, but I am doing this for a just cause. While I do not understand why you are so curious as to try and prod our people's heads for their thoughts, I will forgive your actions. What did you want to ask? About the Tariaksuk, of course. When did your people first encounter them? Hmm, yes. They have been around for a long time. Longer than I have been. Around the time my ancestors came to this place, we discovered them. Do you think they may have been here for even longer than that? I cannot say for certain. They appear to be as old as time itself. Why do they come here? What is their purpose? Their purpose here is simple. They long to show us their way of life. The Teriaksuk may be very shy creatures, but they are also very lonely. Not many of them exist and so they take. Haven't you ever tried doing anything about it? Or them? My grandfather grew tired of the Teriaksuk, but he was scared of them. Frightened. It is widely known that the words are tempting, to say the least. That is the most of what little rebellion my people were willing to put up. Why so little resistance? Are they dangerous? The Teriaksuk are not a spiritual being like most would say. They are made up of the very same life that makes up you and me, flesh and blood, just expressed in a different way. Actually, there are many misconceptions about these people, but we have to maintain them for my people's safety. What does them being made of blood have to do with their purpose here? Well, not exactly blood, but something similar. Anyway, I cannot exactly say. Why? Because then they would know. What do you mean they know? You may like to think something would simply not exist 
if you don't see it, but they do. They hang at the edges of your vision, like the dark spots you see when you squeeze your eyes shut for too long. So they're here with us? I suppose. They go where they please, listening. Um, I see. I apologize for cutting our conversation short, Mr. Pembroke, but I have other matters to attend to at the moment. I hope this was satisfactory. Yes, yes it was. Good day to you, sir. Oh, and do avoid the shores, now that they know. I'm sure you've already been told that by now? Of course. End log. U-04 November 2, 2000 135630 The people here seem to live in silent contempt for the RPC-147-1 instances, but are too afraid to do anything, simply living with whatever they happen to do. I am at a loss as to exact specifics for meeting with the instance and their conditions. However, I assume these encounters are between one instance and one individual only. I fear that the only way to acquire any further information on RPC-147 would be through having an encounter with them myself. In preparation, I will perform a cautionary survey of areas highlighted by particularly high rates of disappearances. Further updates shall be sent in appropriate respects. Should assistance be required in the future, suitable actions shall be taken as such. Note, it is at this point that Agent Pembroke ceases communication with the Authority. E-01 1730-01 Today is the 3rd of November, the time being 5.30 pm. I have decided to take preemptive action and perform a closer inspection. I have activated the voice recorder function in case anything major happens. I am not sure whether or not they'll appear if I have it turned on, as previous tests have concluded that they don't. Maybe they will. It's just a gut feeling. If they don't, oh well. I'll narrate as much as I can to adequately record the progressing events. 180109 Thirty minutes have passed. No anomalous activity has been as of yet detected. I am beginning to believe this exercise is pointless. 180632 I think… I think one of them is out there. I can't really see it. Even their silhouette is blurry as all hell. Sounds of car door opening and closing. Steps can be heard in the sand. It's… it's gone. But I swear I just heard… Damn it! I forgot my… Where the hell is it? It's still in the car. It's gone for sure now. I thought I heard something, but… Hmm. 181208 Nothing turned up to my obvious disappointment. After standing out by the beach for a few more minutes, no RPC-147-1 instance has shown up like I had initially expected. I'm currently heading back to gather my bearings and make some kind of conclusion on the current state of events. 184056 Various sounds of steps and a door shutting. A moment of silence passes before Pembroke starts to talk again. Why are they here? They're… There's more than one in my… I, I got back to my room. I can't see them, but there's black spots in my eyes. Black spots. Like the Anupia Elder had said. They're here. Or at least I think they are. They're listening. They're… talking. The train. The one underwater. The snake under the azure sea. Why me? We know. They know. About what? I… I have to go. I can't record anymore. Now that they know. They know about us. The device at this point in the audio recording is to be assumed to have been left behind by Agent Pembroke. Addendum 147-02 As of October 3, 2000, instances of RPC-147-1 departing from RPC-147 have increased substantially in numbers. Despite this, the disappearances within a nearby town are not relative to this random bolster in numbers. After the recovery of the documents made under Agent Pembroke, it is to be assumed to be a result of theirs and the Authority's sudden involvement near the anomaly. Requests for reclassification of RPC-147 
as a sapient hazard, are currently ongoing.